this is this is old news but i thought i'd cover it anyway this is courtesy of hype it says sneaker store issues apology for destroying boxes to deter reselling so obviously there's an issue in sneaker you know in sneaker culture or in, with sneaker is that cool what do you call it sneaker culture now is it cringe to say that whatever there is a problem at the moment with i wouldn't say reselling is the issue it's more so a supply and demand thing i've always kind of bemoaned the fact that you know sneakers the sneaker industry is now what worth billions um everybody and their mother collects shoes to a certain extent you know people wear yeezys day in day out nothing special like that as it was previously um and if that's the case why don't those brands just make more of the shoes that people actually want to buy these limited edition shoes and just make them more readily available people then say oh no then you won't want you won't want them anymore but i just think the way to kind of there must be some sort of middle ground that allows people to actually want to wear their shoes and kind of still partake in this culture to get them and also maintain some level of scarcity. There must be a middle ground. I just think this situation we're in at the moment, which just hasn't changed, where certain stores get a certain allocation, people backdoor some pairs, um, pairs are gone before they even leave the factory, kids, you know, kids of flipping Nike executives are buying, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pairs of shoes on their mum's credit card and shit and reselling them for triple the price and all that stuff is mostly the fault of the actual sneaker brands themselves mainly nike is a kind of the main culprit of this sort of stuff right they've had a stranglehold on the sneaker scene for ages and they've not really wanted to let go and they've not really wanted to make any changes to appease the audience that they're trying to bleed dry with all these copious amounts of colorways and different limited edition models it's flipping a piss take which is why i say fuck nike i just buy my shit and don't suck anyone's dick because it's a waste of time and obviously that negatively affects people that just want to buy the shoes and wear them and then certain stores then decide to take up kind of matters into their own hands to kind of correct the system and it's not really their place to do so and if anything it just causes more issues right you just kind of have to work with what you have and i just think this is a really great example of just you know maybe trying to do a good thing your heart's in the right place but it just kind of falling flat and angering people and just kind of driving home the point that these brands are putting people in a position where they're kind of having to harass store members because they feel as if they have no real way of kind of getting the shoe that they want because of this stupid system at the moment where you have to enter a raffle right raffles when i was younger was a thing that you entered for you basically bought a raffle ticket when i was a kid kind of like a lottery ticket the, the the ticket itself was a nominal fee a pound 20p whatever and if you were lucky enough you might get something that was you know 100 times the value of the lottery ticket you bought that was what a raffle actually was not you buying a ticket in order to get the chance for you to spend money on a shoe that you want to wear and then more likely than not you don't get it that wasn't really what a raffle was but again i digress we continue it says it says here, um, last week, London-based sneaker retailer Offspring experimented with a new method to deter reselling for a release of the unclaimed sneakers from previous raffles. So I didn't even know this was a thing. Supposedly, there's an unclaimed selection of shoes that's kind of sitting at Offspring from releases that they have, obviously limited edition shoes that people don't go and collect. Of course, you know, I'm assuming when you go and do your raffle at most of these places, you put your size in and what you want, and then you get sent a text or an email to let you know that you've got a shoe um, you've been lucky enough to you've been lucky to be selected to purchase the shoe that you want to buy and then some people just can't be bothered after all the hoopla or the stress of waking up and f5ing everywhere they're just like you know what fuck this i don't really need them which is you know what you should be doing because you know these guys are bending over the barrel and making you buy stuff that you don't need again and again and again and then i guess you know they have a surplus amounts of these shoes and for the most part I imagine most of these shoes are the ones that no one wants because in the stores that i've worked in if people don't collect the shoes that they've kind of been allocated or you know in a raffle then somebody else will just go and take them because you know they're a limited edition shoe everyone wants it so it's unlikely you're going to have their stock of a shoe that everyone wants just not likely so so if there is limited edition shoes that didn't sell and then they can't get rid of them because they you know no one's going to buy them retail because they're they're designed in a way that would only appeal to a certain segment of people that like those kind of shoes cool so it continues clips circulating on social media show the offspring employees jumping on several shoe boxes and instagram story posted by offspring showing flattened boxes with the caption we don't wear boxes caught the attention of sneakers around the world the backlash to the experiment was now been forced offspring to issue an official apology the apology post on instagram was that customers were alerted to the method to the terror reselling that was done to ensure the fair release of the community noted so again 
it makes sense if the shoe is something it would make sense if the shoe somebody wanted but still i don't think or spring or stores should be in a position to tell people what they should do with the stuff that they buy with their hard-earned money right once i give you the money for the goods and you hand it over to me there is no conversations left there anymore you don't have any ownership on what i have i don't have any ownership on the money you have anymore maybe if i keep my receipt into the refunding it there's still a communication to be had but this idea that they can kind of it's pretty demeaning right it's quite it's like they're babying you and they're telling you where what and what you should be doing with your shoes and that's why i say i don't really have a problem with resellers i think if you want to go out and buy shoes and pay away through college or whatever it may be or ensure you got it you got a good kind of budget for weed and stuff i don't care do it but the issue mostly lies at the feet of the brands themselves the manufacturers of these shoes who are unwilling um to produce and kind of you know give the people the shoes that they want in the quantities that they're able to buy them in and to maybe put in better processes that allow stores to get a healthy amount of stock so that they can kind of feed their local community that's how it should be so you don't have you know sales assistants who are on seven quid an hour jumping on boxes and then having to you know d you know read death threats from people all around the world because they're jumping on boxes of shoes which is basically akin to spitting on shoes or something do you know what i mean it's just not on and of course um there's a video here where is it yeah there's a video here or from twitter let's play a bit of it don't get me wrong when i used to work in retail i used to do this too when you'd kind of like if somebody especially if you worked in like a big shoe brand store there'll be a lot of foreign tourists who would just buy shoes and they wouldn't want to take the box with them and you'd kind of this would be part of the fun part of your day you had to kind of crush all the boxes and put them out into the recycling bins but in a sneaker store a limited edition one that sells kind of limited edition shoes this is real sacrilege really to be honest you're forcing people to what wear the shoes not have the boxes why have people want the boxes again i'm not really a fan of boxes i always been mine but some people want them for storage some people just want to have them for the having them sake and again you're not in the position to tell people how and what they should be doing with their items once they pay for it it's just bizarre to say the least <laughs> And it maybe just speaks again to the overall sense. I won't say entitlement, but this kind of weird kind of, um, you know, sometimes you get this weird vibe when you go into sneaker stores where they kind of feel as if like um, they're doing you a favor by selling you a shoe that they have no business in, that didn't make the, the, the design. It's just, you know what I mean? This kind of overinflated sense of self, you know, and I had it myself again, working in the sneaker store. I don't know what happens. Maybe because you work in a place where a lot of people want to work and you've got stuff that a lot of people want. It kind of gives you this idea that you're somehow at this elevated position when you're just a sales assistant. Um, no one at Nike knows who you are. No one cares who you are. You're never going to get a job there for the most part, right? Like it's just, you, but you have this idea that, okay, if I work here, this is going to get me da, 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 da. Maybe, maybe, but for the most part, most people don't. Do you know what I mean? And I've been in that position myself. I know how kind of, you know, the games you have to you have to be a, you have to be, you have to be a flipping shark to make that work you have to be very strategic in what you do it takes a lot of planning it takes a, you know it's a lot of happenstance and luck and stuff involved in it so maybe that adds to it but there is a little bit of a hint in it but again they did apologize was the main thing so let's read their actual apology here it says here um which is sign well, i don't know what that's meant to show there like uh, reaching out to sneaker gods and saying i'm sorry i'm sorry with like a nondescript racial hand here i don't know what that means but hey we continue it says here offspring hq on instagram they apologize for that video and said here as most of you will now um will know we invest a lot of time in trying to get things right our offspring community latest shoes on what latest shoes on as many feet as possible our mission from its formation cool on this journey, we have continued to break new ground and test new ideas and thoughts, however crazy they may seem at the time. Our golden rule is that we listen to our community and welcome feedback. Good to know. So we have reached many milestones that have helped to shape where we are today and we will always put our hands up when we get something wrong and we will strive to improve it. On Friday, we experimented with a unique new way to deal with uncollected pairs of old raffle shoes and we offered them to our community in a safe FCFS way um, with a pair what with a fair one rule for all the rule is simple one pair in your size per person and no box 
again there are no box fingers like what are you doing um the reason for one person is obviously fair to our community and to spread out limited edition qual uh, quantity of desired styles where it's possible the no box was to ensure that the item is available ready to wear and cannot be returned no it's to stop reselling which is nonsense the not returning thing you can just make sure it's just not returnable and you put that on the receipt i guess legally if somebody has a receipt they can always return something i think i've been in that position i retail myself but whatever this is explained to um this was explained to all the majority of people were happy but some were concerned about the value of the product minus the box and they chose not to purchase for this we want to apologize of course which is annoying isn't it? imagine going there and you can't get the box and it's like and they're just giving you the shoes in a plastic bag like what is this tj maxx it continues um for this we want to apologize what sounded like a good idea caused unnecessary controversy so we accept that we got this wrong we should have supplied the box fair play to them we won't do it again we accept the fcs the fcfs what's that first come first serve right um of high heat product high heat product honestly so whoever's writing this copy like find the nearest bridge and jump off it head first mate um will future be the via pre-arranged hatch appointments what's a pre-arranged hatch appointment like a hatch like a bin hatch that they chuck shoes at you in your face on carnival street like that we apologize for those customers who are offended by our actions and everything we try has always been for the betterment of our community. But we always try our best. We will never stop engaging and trying to find new and improved ways to serve our community. Just serve them the shoes, man. You don't need to find new and cool, interesting ways to sell shoes to people. The raffle's already gay as it is and annoying. Just sell the shoes, right? The whole thing is a farce. Um, this whole finding new ways to kind of connect the community is bullshit for the most part they're a fairly decent sneaker store anyway for the ones that we have here in london people seem to vibe with them more people seem to enjoy their shopping experience there's a lot of kind of old school sneaker heads that still um, exist in those sort of stores and work there who do a great job there's obviously a great little community of workers there people that shop there blah -de blah 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 that's the, that's as best as you can get all this other kind of engineering new processes to buy stuff it's just so excessive and over the top it says yeah but whatever the frustration with the decision we make it never justifies the actions of some who humiliate or threaten our staff on social media or in store the policies were not made by our staff and experiments are not driven by them that is neither the character nor spirit of our community and we abhor all such behavior but again you put them in that position didn't you you put them in that position front and center you empowered them to be quote unquote the arbitrators of who should be reselling and who shouldn't who gets a box and who doesn't so it's no surprise that people kicked off and decided to point their ire at the people who they saw on the video because there's no i'm for sure those videos don't contain managers doing it right or people that are actually calling the shots were involved in that nonsense it's always the retail staff who are getting paid the less um who are getting paid you know what six seven quid or eight pound an hour are the ones that have been put front and center set front front and center sorry going too fast there and you know now they're in a position where they're having to kind of retract everything and apologize fair enough they apologize that's all a good thing but again this just goes to show the nonsense that surrounds sneaker culture and it's just a whole bunch of bullshit man people have kind of just accepted that these brands can go around not supplying demand not manufacturing shoes to kind of fulfill the demand that exists out there even though it's a billion dollar industry even though everybody in their nan knows what a dunk is has worn the yeezy and all that stuff it just isn't what it was before just make the shoes let people buy them and go from there i don't understand why you can buy an apple iphone as many times as you want um a, a new imac and stuff but you can't buy a limited pair of shoes a limited pair of flipping sakai ld waffles if you don't register and if you don't retweet it something and at your friend in a comment and all this sort of nonsense these sort of hoops you have to jump through and then don't get me started on the friends and family stuff you get seeing people you know you're seeing young lord and he's flipping fat tubby self wearing these disgusting outfits wearing all these crazy nikes that you're never going to be able to get you see them wearing him fair enough if you think he looks cool you save your money you want to wear what he wears and then it comes out and you can't buy it right what's the point like they just honey dick you they show you all this stuff that you can't buy see them to people who don't really appreciate the shoes because they get everything for free because that's imagine if i was young lord and ian Collin, these kind of people and i was getting sent boxes of free tier zero nike products i probably would wear them the same way they're wearing them right with you know stupid t you know baggy teared up jeans and tie-dye shirts and you know doing the money fund everywhere i go i'd probably do the same thing as well because why not but then 
when you want to wear them or when you want to purchase them as a regular civilian there is no route to do so because that shoe doesn't exist for the regular civilian there's no way to purchase that shoe because it's a limited friends and family only release and even when the retail version does come out it's still limited to the point where the odds of you getting it are much better than you playing the lottery do you know what i mean it's just a nonsense system nonsense nonsense system and now you have again stores kind of in, trying to step in and be the arbitrators of who buys and who doesn't like come on man what are we doing here what uh what are we doing here as um the great brendan shaw says often